Good morning. Um, first, I would like to thank the scientific committee for the invitation. Um, I'm happy to participate on the event. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, a part of the work that I did uh, on my PhD at Duke uh, with Professor Jerry Ryder. And it's about uh, non-ignorable missing data um, imputation and adaptive design. So first I'm going to give an uh, introduction about the problem um, and our motivations. Um, then I'm going to describe the methodology that we used, the, the mixture model, some imputation methods, uh, the adaptive design scheme, and then some utility measures. Uh, I'm going to illustrate with the census, uh, some census manufacturers data and uh, wrap up. So first, when we started thinking about this problem, uh, we were working with um, some collaborators at the, census, um, at the US Census Bureau. So we had uh, data from the Census of Manufacturers, um, which is a survey administrated by the US Census Bureau annually with um, sample estimates of the statistics of all manufacturing establishments with one or more paid employee. Uh, and it provides the statistics uh, on employment, payroll, cost of materials consumed, operating expenses, value of shipments, and so on. So we were thinking about uh, this particular data set. Um, and we're also thinking about adaptive design, uh, which is, um, in includes methods that use uh, auxiliary information to tailor and update the sampling scheme uh, while the survey is going on. So this auxiliary information can include um, administrative records, um, data from other uh, sources, other surveys, um, paradata, which is data about the data collection process itself. So while the, the uh, interviewers are collecting the data, they can uh, have some observations that um, characterizes paradata. And the actual responses, as they are collected, can be used as auxiliary information. And these changes on the survey design can be applied to uh, individuals. Um, so uh, depending on uh, their characteristics, we can have different approaches for um, different individuals or the entire survey, which is what we're going to focus on. Um, so basically, the question is, um, when we, ha we have an uh, ongoing survey, we can make the decision to stop da the data collection at some point. We can say that uh, we have enough uh, information, or we need to invest on collecting more data. So we still need more information. And that's the question that we want to answer. So if uh, we decide to stop the first uh, option, we need to impute the missing data, what we still haven't observed, based on what we have observed. So first, we have uh, suppose that we have our respondents, um, this first block here, and we have the non-respondents. So in order to get a complete data set, we're going to impute them. Um, we, we're going to impute the non-respondents based on what we have observed. The second option, uh, we, if we decide to continue, we are going to first collect an extra wave. So I have my first respondents. Then we're going to collect a follow-up sample. So now I have more observations, and, but I'm going to still have some non-respondents. And then uh, I'm going to impute them. And we can impute them based on uh, if we assume that they look like the follow-up sample, we can impute them. Um, with a model fitted to the follow-up sample, so they're going to reflect um, this similarity. Or if we assume they look like the entire set of obser observations, we can impute the non-respondents based on everything that we have observed. So these are the two um, options for the imputation. Um, and we also uh, need to think about the, the adaptive design uh, part, which is how do we make this decision to stop or not. Um, it's uh, an advantage to stop because we are going to reduce the total cost of my survey. We don't need to insist on uh, collecting all this data. Uh, we can stop earlier. And uh, we can release the results uh, earlier. So they can process all the data and have the summaries and the statistics to be released earlier. 
Uh, but in order to do that, we need to verify um, if data quality and the inference are not sacrificed to undesirable levels. So as statisticians, that's our uh, main concern. So we want to be able to do statistics with uh, the release, the, the, all the, the inference that we're going to do with the data um, is um, good enough. And how we're going to do that? So um, we're going to assess the data quality uh, with information measures uh, based on quantities of interest. Uh, and how they are um, changing at each survey stage. So that's the, how we're going to answer this question. Um, these are two uh, papers that are very similar, and we started uh, looking at those when we had this problem in mind. Um, so they proposed some stopping rules for surveys with multiple waves. So we had different waves at, um, for collecting the data, um, but they do this, um, this is stopping rules based on a binary response variable, which was very limiting uh, in our opinion. So we wanted to have something that uh, was more general. And another um, limitation uh, is that most imputation methods assume that the data is missing at random. That means that the probability of missing does not depend um, on the missing variables. So for example, if we have a survey um, and women are more likely to, than men to respond to a question about income, given that I have observed um, the gender of all my uh, individuals, this, uh, in this case, the income would be missing uh, at random. But we need to consider the, the hypothesis that the non-respondents are missing not at random, which means that the non-observed variables are related to the reason why they're missing, uh, which is a little bit more complicated because we don't have this data and that's why this data is missing. So the, in this case, uh, an example is that uh, if we have a survey um, where we're asking the income, the income is, will be missing not at random if higher income respondents uh, tend to, not, to refuse to answer this question about income. So I, have, I don't observe the, the income for these individuals, and the reason why is related to, the, to these missing values. So it's a little more tricky, a little more complicated in this case. And this actually happens, uh, it's a valid um, hypothesis in our case, in our uh, data set, that was our motivation. So we started thinking about this uh, particular case. Um, so, for the methodology, we wanted a model uh, for the observed data that uh, had continuous multivariate data. Uh, we are gonna, we had variables uh, to be, uh, that are correlated with heavily skewed distributions um, because the data is about employment and payroll and so on. And we wanted a model flexible to capture different uh, distributional features uh, that could um, happen in the data. So uh, we chose a mixture of multivariate normal distributions with the Drischler process prior uh, to, to allow us fl some flexibility uh, and better estimation. Um, and most importantly, we were more interested in what we could do afterwards. Um, I'm, it's going to be clear uh, towards the end, but we wanted something that we could, um, a model that we could change and adapt to, to include our um, beliefs about the missing not, uh, not a random um, hypothesis. So uh, just some formal definition of the model. We're going to uh, consider that we have n complete p-dimensional observations. We are going to uh, standardize them um, just to facilitate our uh, prior specification in our modeling, uh, and then we're going to have a component indicator, zi, for the each ith observation um, that is going to um, indicate uh, which of my k clusters um, this observation will be uh, assigned to. Uh, and here, this is a truncate um, model, so we have to specify this value k. Um, we normally specify large enough, and then we, if we need more, we can change that. Um, and this also facilitates the, the sampling. Uh, and we have uh, these components with probabilities pi k 
to be the probability that the ith observation is on the kth cluster. Um, and then each component follows a multivariate normal distribution with mean mu and um, covariance sigma. So basically this is our model. We have um, each uh, p-dimensional y given the zi's is a multivariate normal distribution and we know the mean and the covariance and the z's given the pi's are multinomial. Um, so then we need to do the prior specification um, and first, we started with the uh, conjugate priors um, following a, a work with the same uh, similar idea. So um, that makes the, our lives easier when we're doing the, the computation. So we could get the posterior samples uh, with a Gibbs sampler. So uh, the prior specification for mu given sigma was also multivariate normal. Um, and then the sigmas had an inverse Wishart prior. Um, but then uh, I hope that makes that gets clear when I show you the pictures. We we needed um, a little bit more control on the regions uh, of my of my data of my sample space. So we proposed using uh, an alternative prior. So we fixed the covariance matrices. So we have all the clusters with the same size. Um, that uh, facilitates our process because now we can. Um, control the sizes of our clusters, and we know that we can make it smaller, so we can, if we need to impute data on specific regions, that uh, allows us to do that. Uh, when we have the conjugate prior, we ended up with uh, a lot of like larger clusters that were overlapping, and that didn't give us the flexibility that we needed for this specific application. So uh, I hope that it's clear when I show you the, the plots. And then we have a stick break breaking representation for the weights, um, just following the, the standard specification. So before going into the, the imputation part, we need to assess the two types of non-response that we can encounter. So we have the first one, which is the unit non-response. Non -response. So the entire vector for an for a individual is missing. They didn't give us any answer, which is the case when the, um, the company doesn't uh, send back the form for the, for the survey. Um, so we're going to impute the entire vector for that, um, for that unit um, for this N completely missing respondents. Um, and we do that after we fit the model. And we can do that assuming missing at random or missing not at random. Um, the other case uh, is the item non-response, which is if the person doesn't send uh, the, the answers for just some of the items of the survey, and we can do that uh, within the model fitting, um, and that is, um, I'm not going to talk about this today, it's on my, uh, a part of the, the work that we did is on my thesis, but so today we're just going to need to think about this entire vector that we're going to impute. So when we're doing the imputation, if we're doing the imputation assuming missing at random, we can generate this imputed data from the posterior predictive distribution. So that's very easy, straightforward if we fit the model. Uh, but when we're doing the missing not at random case, we need to alter uh, um, and change this posterior predictive distribution a little bit. Um, and how we're going to do that? So we're going to have our respondents, and we're going to fit our mixture model. So we have our set of the parameters, the posterior samples. Uh, and then we need to um, change this a little bit. Um, to, in order to change that, uh, change mu and sigma can be a little complicated the, because of the dimensions. So we propose to, to alter the weights of the clusters. So we're going to uh, keep the same mu's and sigmas, the same uh, clusters, on the same locations, but we're going to change the weights. And that way we can have a different distribution um, that is slightly different from uh, the, the posterior predictive distribution. Um, and the way we're going to change those weights is going to reflect um, the hypothesis that we have for the non-respondence pattern. And then based on this, we can proceed and do our um, imputation for the non-respondence. 
Um, just to clarify, when I, uh, we need to uh, do, change these weights, we wanted to identify which cluster we were talking about, so we ranked them based on, on the, in our cases we have positive uh, variables. We ranked them base, based on the minimum. So when I talk about top rank clusters, I'm talking about the higher values and bottom rank clusters about the, the lower, the minimum values. Um, we also needed to um, select and summarize our posterior samples because uh, each MCMC iteration can result in a different cluster allocation, even if it's slightly different. Um, each of my uh, iteration is going to have a little bit of a difference. So we needed to uh, select one. We cannot change the pies for each of those. So we proposed summarizing the, the cluster allocation by selecting the sample that has the largest posterior value. So after the MCMC, we evaluate the posterior value for each iteration giving what the sample uh, values of the parameters, and we selected the, inter the iteration with the maximum posterior value. So the results that I'm going to present here um, are with the cluster allocation from the maximum posterior value iteration. Um, now we get to the hardest part of the problem, which is to uh, how do we specify the new probabilities pi star? Um, so we developed an R application using a package Shiny um, to uh, allow us to do the, this non-ignorable missingness imputation for multivariate continuous data. Um, and the application allows the user to set uh, new probabilities for each of the clusters with a slider. So I have a slider um, for each cluster, and then you can change the values, the, the probability for that cluster, and the, the application is, gonna to, is going to display you the results uh, for some imputation with that particular, with, with that uh, different weights that you just assigned, with those new weights. Um, and these results include uh, some scatter plots uh, summary statistics. Um, and the, the code is available, so if you have some regression, some other model that you want to fit and see what happens to your results as you uh, tweak the, the imputation model, you can include that as well. So uh, this is more like a um, sensitivity analysis um, interface that the user can uh, um, test um, as many scenarios as he wants and see what happens to the results. Um, I don't know, you probably cannot see any of it. So this is a screenshot of the, of the application. Um, this is with uh, some other data set that we worked on. Um, it's a similar uh, data set, from, but it's from Colombia. And we have some three variables. That is also from the uh, industry. Uh, and here we have the sliders. We have 13 clusters that were fit. Um, here's the, the scatter plot. Um, in gray, in the bottom, you have the, what was observed, and in black is the imputed point. So we fix the number of um, missing values that we're going to impute, and here is the default value. So when you open the application with this data set, um, the values here in the sliders are set to what was observed on the missing, um, on the maximum posterior uh, iteration. Um, so here you can see the the circles of each of the clusters, of the 13 clusters. Um, and you can see that the, we have the fixed sigma. So um, we're going to impute all these black points here. I imputed based on what was observed. So they are um, being imputed on the missing at random. Um, and here on the left, we have the log transformed standardized data that we worked on. And because on the right, you can see the raw data that you cannot uh, verify much what is happening. So we worked on the transformed data. And this is the first tab that is the scatter plot. The second tab um, has some summary statistics. And the third tab, you can download the imputed data. So um, we need to do some sensitivity analysis. We need to consider different uh, plausible missing scenarios for, for this. Uh, because it's really hard to uh, deal with the, this non-ignorable missingness. Um, we have to uh, 
we have to put a lot of this uh, subjective uh, information into the scenario. So for each scenario, so we're going to specify the mixture probabilities pi star. And we're going to consider a hypothetical population um, generated by imputing the non-respondents um, following these scenarios. And then we're going to evaluate the impact on inferences if we collect follow-up samples with varying sizes. So we have delta, which is the a value between 0 and 1, that's going to give us the size of the follow-up sample. From 0, no follow-up sample, and 1, we have, we have the maximum uh, observations that we can, given um, a budget, or if we don't have a limit, uh, we're going to collect everyone. So for each scenario, so suppose that we're considering one scenario, I'm going to generate MP hypothetical populations by imputation. And this MP is the replication for multiple imputation. So I fit my model to my ob uh, observed data. Then I have my mu's, my sigmas. I'm going to change the pi's depending on the scenario that I'm on. And then I'm going to impute the d tildes for the non-respondents. Uh, and this is going to um, give me MP hypothetical populations. So I'm going to have MP hypothetical populations. This first part is the same, is what I've observed. And here in the bottom, I have the replications um, for the multiple imputation. So these are my hypothetical populations. Now I need to consider the follow-up samples. So I have this population, and then I'm giving my delta. I'm going to sample this uh, part here that we are going to consider to be our um, observation. Um, as well, depending on the size of delta. And then I can do the two options that I mentioned before. I can do the imputation assuming that these guys here are similar to what I've seen here. Um, and in the, at this point, we are assuming that what, ha what is left is uh, missing at random. So we're saying that we're going to stop data collection um, we don't need to go after those guys because they're similar to what we have seen so far. So this is our first option. Um, and again, for the multiple imputation, we need to do replicates of those. So we do MF replicates. Or we can do option B. Uh, we fit the model just to this uh, follow-up sample and do the missing at random imputation for, for the ones that are still missing. And do also the, the replicates. Now, uh, for each scenario, uh, for each follow-up sample size, I have uh, MP uh, hypothetical populations. And for each of those, I have MF um, complete uh, data sets with the follow-up sample, giving a delta. Now we need to compare the two data sets, the population and the one, the, the D tilde, which has the follow-up sample. Um, and for each P, I have MF D tildes. Uh, and for each scenario and for all imputations. So in order to do that, we use propensity scores, which uh, are normally used uh, in observational studies uh, for matching covariate ca characteristics. So the propensity score is the probability of being assigned to the treatment group, giving the, the covariates. So what we do is we stack the population with the D tilde, with the, the data set that has the the follow-up sample, and we compare those. The population would be at my treatment group, and the other, the D tilde is going to be my control group, and we calculate the propensity scores. If my propensity scores are close to a half, it means that I cannot distinguish the two data sets. Um, and the farther they go from that, um, the more different the two uh, data sets are. So we have this measure uh, row here that, um, if it's closer to zero, it means that um, I have two similar data sets. Um, and the larger it gets, um, the more distinguish, distinguishable the two data sets are. Um, so this is uh, the, the illustration with the census of manufacturers data. Um, I have the total values of shipments, total employment, and salary and wages. Uh, we selected those variables for the plastics products uh, industry. And we have three scenarios, the missing at random, the missing non at random uh, with higher probabilities for bottom ranked clusters. So we're assuming that the smaller companies are not sending the, their forms. 
uh, and the missing not at random with higher probabilities for top rank clusters. So this will be um, how bad our results would be if the, higher, the, the larger companies don't send their results. Um, how that's going to impact in our statistics. Um, so this is the scatter plot. Same thing that I showed you before. The observed data is in gray here in the bottom. The black points are the, the imputed ones. And there we have the, in this case, we have eight clusters with the fixed sigma. This is for the missing and random scenario. So if I wanted to impute those, those points, assuming they come from the same distribution as what I've observed, this is what it would look like. This is for uh, the missing not at random scenario. So I have higher probabilities for bottom ranked clusters. Um, we selected those weights um, using the slider manually with help of, from our collaborators that work at the Census Bureau. So uh, this is what the data would look like if we had more non-respondents coming from the bottom ranked clusters. And the third scenario, the opposite, if we had more non-respondents coming from the top rank clusters. So we increase those probabilities, and that's what the data would look like. And we have the other results also summarized in the thesis. Um, and now just to finish, the, we can look at the, the row, those, that measure that we had. For the first option, where we have the entire, um, the entire data set, we're going to impute based on that, and that for just the follow-up sample and for the different, some different values of delta. And we can see that the row is decreasing, obviously. Um, but basically, this plot here is to inform us um, if, because there is a cost, an increasing cost of getting more sample. So based on these measures, we can decide if it's uh, worth collecting 25% more data or not. Uh, if the decrease on the propensity score is going to be worth the increase in the cost. So uh, we propose this flexible model for this um, non-ignorable missing imputation. Um, and the hard part here is that under this, this case, the missing data distribution is unknown. So uh, the method allows for different levels of prior information. If I have no idea and I want to test different results, or if I have some clue about what is happening, we can uh, put this information into our um, math, ma method and we have this interface to facilitate. Uh, and we have a framework that uh, provides uh, a way for, for the user to evaluate the different scenarios. Uh, and if we decide to stop data collection, the non-respondents have to be imputed for release. But you can do that with diff a different model, use uh, auxiliary information or anything like that. What we are proposing here is more for the uh, sensitivity analysis. And that's it. Thank you.